our world is based on science, they say, but the scientific community has based its assumptions on the political, not the objective belief that all in existence in the world is matter in motion or matter and energy. This scientific worldview maintains that all matter was set in motion at some point of origin, originating from nothing and is moving towards some utopia. But when has science ever proven its most fundamental premise to be true, that all reality must be physical reality? Its own methods can't be used to prove the hypothesis. Since the scientific method can only measure the physical, it can neither prove nor disprove the existence of non-physical realities. This belief that reality must be physical, in fact, comes from the doctrine of materialism. But that's just a political assumption, certainly not a scientific truth. Thus. Science isn't really scientific. Science is political. Science isn't objective, but subjective. The scientific method is reductionist. It can only measure the physical dimension of what we experience as reality. The broader reality that includes our dream world, the spiritual world, the world of the soul and the instinct can't be measured by science. A physical ruler can only measure physical objects. How does one measure an ideal that only exists in one's dreams? In all, the fraud of materialism reveals that the politics of scientific progress is a human construct. The belief in the scientific worldview, or scientism, is a human doctrine, not an absolute truth. There's no progress from zero to infinity, from nothing to utopia. There's only change. Utopia shall, therefore, forever remain a political illusion. I believe all people have the right to live as who they are and not as who social engineers want them to be. No one ought to have his personality obliterated in order to produce economically more desirable behavior. Our way of life is called the free life. It comes with a price tag we're willing to pay. Before the time of nations, the people lived freer, but it's not true that globalism improves the restrictions of national life. It worsens them. Globalism has brought men less freedom and less democracy, not more. The urban world offers us a diversity of visual impressions, but no diversity of thought. In fact, the city doesn't require us to think at all. Its masters don't want us to think. The urban leadership's sole interest lies in maximizing the economic output of the human races. It's to the nation's praise that they've managed to resist their people's assimilation into the global open society for so long. The way forward, however, lies not in surrender, but in struggle. We must never give up resisting our assimilation. We must never, never, never surrender. If we do, men will be condemned to live like sheep. But we're not sheep. We're not cattle. We're human beings. Men, today we set sail to claim our rightful dues, to reclaim the lands that were taken from our ancestors. We didn't come this far to save humanity from her sins, but rather to save the world from human greed. For two centuries since the industrial age, the global society and its benefactors have been living off the spoils of other people's labor. They've enriched themselves at everyone else's expense. These parasites justified their greed with the empty fictions of equality and diversity. What diversity? They all think alike. What equality? They send dissenters into exile. The social engineers have molded people into their own worst image. Through the destruction of the old, we shall give birth to the new, a world no longer ruled by money men. The lie of never-ending progress has been unmasked to mean eternal slavery. Eternal struggle is our credo. We shall destroy the machine that made it so hard for us, so impossible to live a dignified life. We demand the life befitting our being. A man is not a gear, he's not a lever, he's more than a programmable machine. He carries the divine spirit in his heart. A man is God's trailblazer, with the high one on his side, he knows not how to quit. He never surrenders. Nothing shall deter him from doing what he believes is just. Not because some international order told him to think a certain way, but because he thought for himself and reached his own conclusions. Even if a man's conclusions are at odds with the manufactured consent of a globalist media. He must not shun the fight. He must step into the light. He alone knows that his personality, uncut like a raw diamond, still possesses greater potential than the combined psyches of the urban collectives. Deceived by the false promise of old age and security, the civilian state has sold the masses into slavery. 
The urban world before us has trampled men's souls and imprisoned their minds. It has ignored their pleas for reason, denied them warmth and kindness. All it ever had to offer was stone-cold bureaucracy. The global society has attempted to teach wolves how to live as sheep, men as cattle, and human populations as colonies of termites. The ideology of peace and progress has turned lions into house cats. And to a large degree, the city has succeeded in doing just that. We, however, rejects, outcasts, misfits, free men. We don't need an organized society to tell us how to act. We don't need to be re-educated. We sculpt our personalities as we see fit. The city didn't want us, but we didn't want the city. For where I stand, there's only two kinds of people, free men and the urban rabble, us and them. My beloved people of the underworld, the desert grows. Woe unto him who hides the desert within. How exactly do deserts grow? Do you know? A desert is made of sand, of dead matter. Deserts don't grow, they can't grow on their own. Deserts grow when the plants and the trees standing at their edges give up their roots. Why do plants and trees give up their roots? They give up on fighting the deserts. They permit the sands to erode them away. When life ceases its struggle with the deserts, that's when deserts grow. When life surrenders, that's when deserts grow. So too grows the human desert. What is the human desert? We recognize it by looking for the perimeter beyond which human beings still have roots. We find then that cities are our deserts. The countryside is where we are rooted. Few plants and trees grow in the city. They can't root in the asphalt, but neither can people. People living in cities have lost their roots too. Their assimilation into urban society has uprooted them from traditional, more meaningful communities. The city grows. Woe unto him who hides the city within. To fight the city, we must root ourselves again firmly. We must replant our communities on the lands where we belong, there where the plants and the trees grow, where the birds have their nests, where the foxes have their holes, the wolves their lairs, and men their homes. Together, we shall resume our eternal struggle with the desert. We shall end the city's advance to here and no further. We shall sow our offspring in the present so that our children may shoot their roots in an ancestral past, branch out and extend their souls toward a fruitful future. I beg you, my people, my European family and their offshoots around the world, rise up, fight for what is right, defend the future for your children, rise up from the darkness and let your light shine.